Hi, I'm Anita Perez, also known as Ruminaria Star, and this is a Metaphysician's Journal, January 11, 2015. And on this day in history, in 1908, Roosevelt dedicated the Grand Canyon as a national monument. He urged Americans to, quote, let this great wonder of nature remain as it now is. Do nothing to mar its grandeur, sublimity, and loveliness. You cannot improve upon it. But what you can do is keep it for your children, your children's children, and all who come after you, as the one great sight which every American should see. Unquote. And on this day, in 1935, in the first flight of its kind, American aviator Amelia Earhart flew solo from Honolulu, Hawaii, to California. Hawaiian commercial interests offered a $10,000 reward to whoever accomplished the first nonstop flight. The next day, after traveling 2,400 miles in 18 hours, she safely landed at Oakland Airport in Oakland, California. And in 2010, on this day, Nyet Hughes, the last survivor of a small group of people who helped to hide a Jewish girl, and Frank, and her family from the Nazis during World War II, died at age 100 in the Netherlands. After the Franks were discovered in 1944 and sent to concentration camps, Gies rescued the notebooks that Anne Frank left behind, describing her two years in hiding. These writings were latest, later published as Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl, which became one of the most widely read accounts of the Holocaust. Quite a few notable people were born on this day. Among them were Alexander Hamilton, who was born in England in 1757, though some sources say 1755. He was a chief aide of staff to General George Washington and served as the first Secretary of the Treasury. He was the founder of the nation's financial system, establishing the National Bank, and the founder of the first political party, the Federalist Party. And on this day, in 1842, William James was born in New York. He was one of the principal founders of the science of modern psychology and brother to the writer Henry James. And in 1946, Naomi Judd was born in Ashland, Kentucky, a famous country singer and activist. And in 1971, in New York City, Mary J. Blige was born, the very famous hip-hop soul artist and singer. Now, today, however, I am going to concentrate on Alice Hall, who was born on this day in 1885 in Moorestown, New Jersey. She was a famous suffragette, and her full name was Alice Stokes Paul. She went to Swarthmore College, and then went on to New York City and London to do graduate work. While in London from 1906 to 1909, she joined the women's suffrage movement in Britain, and was arrested on several occasions, serving time in jail and going on a hunger strike. Upon her return to the United States in 1910, she became involved in the women's suffrage movement here as well. Driven also to change other laws that affected women, she earned a Ph.D. from the University of Pennsylvania in 1912. After becoming a member of the highly active National Women's Party, she became one of the silent sentinels who picketed the White House under the Woodrow Wilson administration in 1917. They were the first group to take such action. Paul was jailed in October and November of that year as a result of those protests. After women won the right to vote with the 19th, 19th Amendment in 1920, Paul devoted herself to working on additional empowerment measures for women. In 1923, she introduced the first Equal Rights Amendment in Congress, and in later decades worked on the Civil Rights Bill and Fair Employment Practices. 
Although she did not live to see the ERA added to the United States Constitution, to date it remains unratified, she did get an equal rights affirmation included in the preamble to the United Nations Charter. Until she was debilitated by a stroke in 1974, Alice Paul continued her fight for women's rights. She died on July 9, 1977, in the town of her birth. And that concludes this entry of a metaphysician's journal. I wish you peace.